I'm out here again in front of Edenville Dam, and I bet you guys have been missing the sunglasses. I told you, once the sun came back out again, I'd be bringing them back out. Again, I want to thank everybody for subscribing, liking, and sharing these videos, and a special thanks to my new patrons, Gary, Rick, John, and Jeff. And to everybody for sending me letters, Todd, Carolyn, and Ken. I'll pop my P.O. box up on the screen right now if anyone else wants to send me anything there. I am up here now on the Titabwasi River side. Um, this is to the north, so upstream, and we can see some of the erosion control work ongoing right now. We can see they have an excavator down here right now, and there's a lot of fill work going on over here. I'm going to try to explain what's happening right here, but they are just about ready to finish up work up here to the north, and then they're going to head on down here to the south and do some work here. It's hard to see. Right along here, you can see this ridge that is all just kind of eroding down into the lake bottom. They're gonna take some fill from down here for this area. This will be a little bit easier to see up here to the north when I head up that direction. I'm gonna get out the big Nikon camera so that we can zoom in a little bit as well. And then maybe head over to that side of the river as well. Uh, maybe get the drone out, see what I can see from that point of view. Right now, they're bringing a lot of fill though. And you maybe just see it behind that off-road truck, that dump truck there. They're bringing in fill and then they're putting riprap over the top of it so that that soil does not wash on down the river and get eroded anymore. And how this is working right now, this project up here to the north is about 500,000. The one down here to the south behind me, it's about 300,000. Landowners, depending on their assessment, are paying 25% uh, though. And that is getting split between the Four Lakes Task Force and landowners. Depending on their assessment, it's really around like $5,000 that landowners have to put up front. And then the Four Lakes Task Force is putting up the rest of it. And then the 75% is being paid by the state. So like I said, this project up here is gonna wrap up probably in the next few weeks. But let's head on down that direction and get a little bit closer look at the project going on here. Again, this is Fisher Contracting doing the work here. All right, I'm down here to the north now on the construction site. You can see this off-road dump truck has a load of riprap gonna cross the river right now. They have uh, steel decking that they're driving on and the steel decking is laid below the river as well. See that water level? It's probably about four feet there. Just hits the cab on the dump truck. Every morning they have to re-break through this ice that refreezes over the river. Like I said last night, we had negative eight degrees Fahrenheit. See the ice on the wheels of this dump truck. And behind him there, that side's already done. All the riprap already laid and fill put in place there. Now they're working on this side of the cut. See all the riprap laid down here. This excavator is going ahead, kind of placing some of that rock. This excavator here in front of me is a Hyundai HX480L. 
Now he's going ahead, moving all this riprap to the front of the excavator. Again, you can see how much erosion is happening all along this bank though. And this is gonna help stabilize this river bank. Off-road dump truck's now gonna make its way back across the river. Get another load of riprap. Pretty interesting. Look at all these ducks sitting right up here. It's just a little area that's not froze. This excavator over here on this side is clearing some ice out of the river channel. And the excavator way over here on this side is loading the off-road dump truck with the rip wrap. This site right back here in the background is a large area that they bulldozed the lake bottom or actually the river bottom in this location to be able to use it for fill on this side. They trucked this across earlier in the project. I'm gonna try to get the electronic construction plans and then we can talk over a little bit of that that shows this area that they were taking from in the area over here on this side that they're now going ahead and laying down the soil and the riprap. These guys don't even stop for lunch. They are working here all day long. I'm going to probably go grab the drone here in a little while film this from the air. You can kind of see how thick that ice is. It's a couple inches and how deep that water is as well. At this point the excavator operator was just trying to get positioned on the other side of the riprap. So he's going ahead clearing some of the ice in the location that he actually wants to sit. Um, he's going to go ahead sit on the other side of that riprap so when the next load comes in, he's able to scoop it and place it downstream there. Uh, they also go ahead and kind of clear the area where all that snow is sitting so that they can put down some of that erosion control matting before they go ahead and add fill and rip wrap. They have a barrier down as well here. Comes a truck back across, another load of rip wrap. You can kind of see the uh, decking, that steel decking under the water. Might be hard to see on the camera, but I'm sure we'll be able to pick this up with the drone pretty easily in the poles they have in place. Take a look up this channel, kind of show you guys the work that has already been completed. 
whole bunch of riprap underneath the snow here. That's already been laid in riprap all along and down this channel to stop the erosion from happening up there. A little bumpy running over that rip wrap. Jumping into the NRCS website now, this was created by the Four Lakes Task Force up here. Uh, just to kind of get the area of where we're at, this is Michigan. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on where the dams are. You can see right here, these are new images that have been taken after the Edenville Dam failed. Um, they show the current river path. This is Sanford down here, and the Sanford Dam is located, or used to be located right in this area. We go up the Edenville Dam. This is the Tobacco River Dam right here. And over here on this side is the Edenville Dam. See these images that were taken after the embankment failed because this is the current river path right here. Uh, this was before the Tobacco River Spillway had been lowered so the water level in the pond area behind the Tobacco River Dam is still pretty high. And we will go up a little bit further north. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see we have Seacord Lake uh, up here and Smallwood Lake here as well. But the area that this uh, erosion control work is happening is right here on Anderson Drive. This area right here is the SD Road. Uh, SD Road Bridge is right up here. And this is happening about half a mile to the south of the SD Road Bridge. There's two projects going on as I had mentioned already. Uh, there's North Anderson Road and then there's a South Anderson Road. Zooming in a little bit more, you can see this is the area that they're crossing the river right in here. Uh, rip wrap locations probably over in this area, and the area that they bulldoze for fill is right in this area. If you click on these green parcels, you can actually see the contractor that was selected and the date that the work started on. And scrolling down, we can actually see some pre-construction pictures that I used earlier on in this video. Now let's jump back into some drone video and see how this worksite looks from the air and kind of talk through a few of the details. Listening to some of the feedback that I have received from people, you guys are enjoying the longer videos with voiceover. So this one's going to be another long one. Um, I'm going to let things play through and kind of explain what is happening to the best of my ability. I'm not an engineer. I'm a chemist, so I'm learning along the way. But as we can see, this off-road dump truck is backing up over top of the riprap. Uh, the excavator here is kind of clearing out some of that snow. He's probably getting a little bit of that waterlogged soil in there as well. Uh, the two crew members up near the seawall will be coming down to lay some of this barrier matting in the bottom of this hole before they go ahead and start covering it up with riprap. Uh, when I had my Nikon camera out here, you can see the amount of ice that this excavator was able to break up to be able to kind of get in this location along this bank to be able to remove some of this uh, snow and soil. Looks like that off-road dump truck is a Cat 730. I'm going to go ahead, pan the camera around, and we'll take a look at what the other excavator is working on over here. Both of these excavators are the same model. Again, this excavator over here is still uh, working on clearing some of that ice. Not sure why he's really clearing the ice in this area. Uh, maybe just kind of getting a little bit of that packed area to start flowing downstream. It was pretty cold on this day. Um, now when I'm able to do this voiceover, we're actually getting a little bit warmer temperature. So this area is starting to flow. You can actually see how many logs there are in the background here too. The Four Legs Task Force actually has said now that you are able to go out there and cut off the logs. Uh, don't rip these stumps out of the ground, but you're able to cut off the tops of these logs. 
down to root level and remove them from the lake bed. Don't just go out there and top them and leave the logs for when the lakes are restored. Uh, they would all be floating downstream and plugging up the dams again. So if you do go out there and chop off the tops of those trees, make sure you do go ahead and remove them from the lake or river bottoms. Now I'm going to go ahead, pan back towards the left. Uh, we can see what the excavator is working on. As I had already mentioned, those two guys, the two crew, were coming down to lay some of that erosion control barrier. Um, and that's what they're actually working on right now. We can see that they're getting some of this out. The excavator is clearing out an area. A little bit more for them to go ahead and lay that in there. And the off-road dump truck is just waiting here to be able to dump this load of riprap until that barrier is in place. Kind of let this uh, video play through a little bit now and we can see a little bit of the process of them trying to go ahead and lay this barrier. Coming into the scene over here on the left side of the screen now is that cut. This cut is actually facing towards the east. A little bit easier to see from the air the areas of riprap that they laid up in that cut. They also placed some fill up in there. Now I'm tilting the camera down. We can see these logs that are in place for them to go ahead and cross the river. You'll actually be able to see the transition where it goes from these logs that they're driving on over to the steel plates. Now coming into view on the left hand side of the screen, those are those steel plates that I was talking about. These are prefabricated and they are actually 20 foot by 8 foot. So they are pretty big. Now we'll go ahead and tilt the camera back up. And we can see the area where they keep driving across with the off-road dump truck. Looks like they use these steel plates in the river where it was at its deepest point about four foot in that area to the bottom of the cab on the off-road dump truck. They had to bring all this equipment, all the excavators, over to the other side of the river through this path as well. Now jumping back to the site, that off-road dump truck was able to dump all this riprap right in the hole that the excavator had cleared. As we watch the off-road dump truck try to cross back over the river, I'm going to try to explain a little bit better than I did at the beginning of the video of where this funding is coming from. It is coming from the NRCS, uh, the Four Lakes Task Force, as well as landowners that are having this erosion control done in front of their property. So 75% is being paid by the NRCS. NRCS is the Natural Resources Conservation Service. And then the final 25% is being split up between the Four Lakes Task Force and the property owners. Property owners are just paying a straight $5,000 no matter what their assessment. And if there's any extra that needs to be paid, um, their additional money to make up that 25%, the Four Lakes Task Force is chipping in for this and paying the rest of it off. Now we can see that off-road dump truck, that Cat 730, making his way back across the river here he's at the point where he's transitioning from the timber mats over to the steel. And going ahead, transitioning through the deepest part of the river there and making his way back up the other side. Coming into frame up here on the top left is going to be the excavator that they are using to load riprap into this truck. And over on the right hand side is the area that they were pulling fill from. Uh, they went ahead bulldozed that whole area together and then we're using the excavator to fill the off-road dump trucks and truck it over to the other side as well. Looks like one of these dump trucks actually went off-roading a little bit over there on the left hand side of the screen through the snow. We can see a little bit more of the equipment they have on the site in this view. Uh, again, there's the bulldozer over there. They have another smaller excavator as well as a smaller uh, off-road dump truck. Then they look like they have a front loader in there as well. There's a second smaller dump truck over there on the right-hand side of the screen as well. And now as that dump truck goes ahead and swings around, this operator is already ready 
with a load of riprap to put in there. It doesn't take many scoops to get him a full load. Over on the left hand side of the screen it looks like there's a couple timber mats laying over there as well as some larger boulders. Let me swing the drone around now and let's take a look at where they were pulling some of that topsoil, uh, some of that fill from for the area across the river. Excavators are still over there, uh, one still clearing ice and the other one breaking through ice to be able to dig a little bit more of that snow out to lay more riprap and barrier matting. And now we can really see over here on the left side where all that fill has been taken. That bulldozer went ahead and took quite a few cuts out of here, pushing it into a large pile, which then they used the excavator to load the dump truck, as I had already said, and take it across the river. I'm going to gain some altitude here, go up to 400 feet with the drone, just so we can get a nice aerial perspective of the site from that altitude. This area that they bulldoze for fill looks like they took a, a couple acres worth. You gain altitude a little bit higher. We're almost there at our 400 feet. And then I will go ahead and pan the camera around so we can see the rest of the site from this altitude as well. Again, that river is pretty froze up there towards the north. Just a couple pockets open here and there for those ducks to sit in. There's the whole site of where they were taking fill from and the excavator loading the off-road dump truck with riprap and the two other excavators working on the other side closer to the river. Clearly all the riprap on the left hand side of the screen was laid before the snowstorm. Looks like there was just a little tiny patch there that they had laid lately. And I'm now facing towards the south with the drone and just kind of looking downstream down the river towards Edenville Dam. It's way off in the distance there. Maybe just see it way at the top of the screen on the horizon. And I'm going to drop back down in altitude, back a little bit closer. This off-road dump truck is just getting full. Perfect timing for me to get down here and see him cross the river again from this side. Now that this operator has crossed the river, he's going to go ahead, turn around, back up. Uh, the guys back there are laying some more barrier matting. I'm going to jump into a clip of some of the ducks that I shot. Just show some of the wildlife in this area. You may see a very interesting duck right in the middle of the screen. It's lacking a lot of its color. This lack of color is called leucism. Uh, this is a leucistic hen mallard duck. A couple people thought it was actually a blonde mallard, um, but if you compare pictures of leucistic hen mallard to this one, it is almost exactly the same. It might actually pop up a JPEG picture to show you the similarities and a lot of nice looking green heads and hens all around this area as well. Would kind of be interested in knowing how many of these were banded. Maybe be able to see that from the video quality here, but let's head on back to the excavator site now and see how work is progressing back here. They just dumped another load of riprap, just kind of extending this cut, the fill, 
down further. We can see a couple survey stakes there. That is where the property owner owns to. I did get my hands on a couple of the engineering diagrams for the site down on the south end. Not this exact site. I'm not able to actually share these with you guys, but I'll share a couple of the numbers that you may be interested in. It looks like all the slopes that are either done with fill or rip wrap are done uh, at a two to one slope. So that's a 50% uh, slope that they're sloping all these to. And uh, looks like for the numbers down on South Anderson Drive, the miscellaneous riprap was 500 cubic yards. The riprap slope protection was 150 cubic yards. Uh, permanent turf reinforcement mats, they used 3,000 square yards of those. And biodegradable mulch blankets was 2,800 square yards. Bank reconstruction was 1,500 cubic yards. Seepage French drains, four each they used down there and they use 5,300 site preparation and grading square yards. I'm guessing that's the, the fill number, not necessarily the rip wrap. So that's just a couple of the numbers for down there on the south site. Uh, again, that site was the one that cost $300,000. Not sure if we can extrapolate anything from that to be able to kind of tell what's happening up here on the north site, but again, most all their grading is done at a 50% grade. Uh, they have different scenarios here that I'm looking at that depends if they're backing up the grades to seawalls or uh, kind of a spillway, kind of a cut. That's all I'm able to share with you guys, so hopefully you find that somewhat helpful. Now kind of swinging the drone back to this site. Uh, again, pretty much the same thing happening again. A lot of just clearing uh, the snow, the waterlogged soil out of the way for that barrier matting to go back down in rip wrap in this location to be put back over the top of it. Uh, wasn't much fill happening on this day. It was just a lot of rip wrap work. I'm going to let the rest of this video play through. And you guys can just kind of watch the fisher guys, the fisher crew, continue doing a little bit more of this erosion control work happening here. Again, this is really helping to protect homeowners' properties. You can imagine that if this work was not being done, the seawalls you see right here in the photo would eventually uh, start losing a lot of that fill in front of them as it gets washed down the river. Uh, the seawalls would fall down in, and then those people would start losing a lot of the soil that make up their property. So again, this is just helping a lot of the landowners maintain the value of their homes while we wait for the lake levels to be restored, the dams to be rebuilt and brought back up to an actual usable lake that people are able to get out there, go boating on, go fishing on. There's been a few people that ask me if you're still able to get a boat on the river. Um, not quite. There's a lot of areas that water level is less than a foot, maybe half a foot depth. You're definitely able to go tubing, maybe even canoeing down the river. Uh, that would be perfectly fine, but it would be very hard to go boating down the river in this area in its current state. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, make sure you like, comment, and share this video. And if you want to support me, the links for this are in the description down below. I'm hoping to get back up to Seacord and Smallwood Dam very soon. Uh, hopefully going to get a live camera set up on Seacord Dam. There's quite a bit of money to raise on the GoFundMe to get that 24 seven live camera set up up there as well though. Link for this is also in the description down below. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.